Do you want to learn how to use curves in Premiere Pro and take your color grading skills to the next level? Well, if so, keep watching. Now, this video is sponsored by us at Editor's Keys. So if you want to edit faster in Adobe Premiere Pro, check out the Editor's Keys range of keyboards and keyboard covers for Premiere Pro. You'll be editing faster in no time. Hey there, welcome to the video. I'm Mark Brown from Editor's Keys. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how the curve section works in Adobe Premiere Pro. And understanding curves is really an essential skill to make your color grading look even better. So I'm gonna go through this step by step to try and make it as easy as possible, especially if it's your first time learning about curves. So let's jump into it. So here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro and this is the shot we're gonna be using. I chose this shot because we have a lot going on here. We have a lot of different colors, we have skin tones, and we have a good variation of light and dark that we can experiment with. So here's the curve section in the Lumetri color panel. If you can't see this, go over to Window at the top, scroll down to Workspaces, and then select Color. So now you can see the curve section. Make sure you have this up here in your Lumetri Scopes panel and make sure you have your waveform activated. To do this, right click and select waveform. Now, if you can't see this panel, go to the window option again and then select Lumetri Scopes. So essentially what this does is it tells you the exposure of the image. At the top, this is the whitest of the whites and the bottom is the blackest of the blacks. And the purpose is so you don't go over the highest mark or under the lowest mark, because if you do, you start to clip and then lose detail and information in your image. So for example, I'll show you now, if you move this section of curves here too much, you can start to really crush these blacks and it really starts to look bad. And same with the whites, with this top part of the curve. When you go past this 100, it just starts to look really badly overexposed and you don't want that. So looking at this, you can see this clip is fine. It isn't going over 100 in the whites and it isn't going below zero in the blacks. So this is good and going through it from left to right, you can see that this bit is the sky here on the left. And this little drop down black bit is the subject's face. And then this curve is the right side of the frame. So the simplest way to describe curves are that the top is the highlights and the bottom is your shadows. And then here in the middle is the midtones. So say you put a point exactly in the middle here and then you pull it up, you're actually making the whole image brighter and then if you lower it, you're then making the whole image darker. So the best thing about this is that you can add any points at any part of the curve so you can isolate certain sections of your shot. The most used and popular technique is creating three points like this and then making an S-shaped curve or an S-curve. So you're just changing the highlights a little, leaving the mid-tones and then decreasing the shadows, leaving the highlights. And if you double click it, it resets it. In this section, you can also choose which color you want to change. So with this on, we're changing every color, but at the top here, you have your red, green, and blue. So if we go to red and we lift it up, you can see the whole shot starts to become more red and of course, vice versa. When you lower it, and again, of course, you can add points. So if you just want to add a bit of red in the shadows, put a point like so, and then you lift up only adding it to the shadows. Exactly the same as what I showed before, very, very straightforward. So now that's explained, let's go back to the white section and start color grading. So first what I do is go to the bottom here in the shadows, and then I look at my scope and I move this to the point where it is just hitting the zero mark, adding some nice contrast already. You can untick this box here so you can see it on and off and you can see it starting to come together nicely. So I'm gonna do the same here at the very top and make sure the highlights and exposure doesn't blow out. So I'm now gonna make it a little bit darker. So I'm gonna add the classic three points like so for the S curve. So I'm gonna raise the top bit a little bit here. I'm gonna leave the middle as it is, and then I'm gonna go and lower the bottom point to around here. And you know, just play around with it to see what suits your shot best. 
So I think this shot looks pretty good. So let's move on to the next section. This section is the hue versus saturation. Now, I personally love this section. Here you can isolate any color you want in the shot and add or decrease the saturation. And what's good about this is that you can click this icon here and this makes it so you can select any point on your shot and it will find the color on the curve so you can manipulate this exact color. For this example, we'll choose the sky and now Premiere reads this and tells us the sky is in between these two spots here. And now we can change it. The next section is hue versus hue. And what this does is it lets you change the hue of a specific color. So for example, if you wanna change the sky, just use this icon again. Select the sky and now you can manipulate it to any color you want. So make sure you don't add too much with this as it can start to make your shot look really unnatural. So only change it a little bit. I normally use this for water or the sky to make it look a bit more teal. And I think this looks more natural as you're not changing it too much. This next section is hue versus luma. This section, I don't really touch too much personally as I really don't feel the need to. But what this does is it adds more brightness to a specific color. And again, you shouldn't manipulate this too much as it can ruin your footage. But if you did want to use this again, I'd use it for the sky and then slightly adjust it and see how that looks. Now we have luma versus saturation. And what this does is it pushes saturation into the luma. I normally use this if I want to add some more saturation into a subject's face, like so. And again, you can decrease this as well. A good tip for this curve and what a lot of other filmmakers do is add two curves here and then add two curves here and then lower them both. This makes sure that the blacks have no other colors in them. So they really are the blackest of blacks and then you get the whitest of whites. And this really helps to keep things more natural looking. This is also really good if you're adding a lot to your footage at a later time, as this can sometimes add color into your shadows and highlights, which is not really what you want. You really want the darkest of the dark to be dark. And this is probably the best way to do it. And finally, the last one is saturation versus saturation. And this is just adding more saturation to any point in the shot. So again, you can play around with the sky or the trees and you can bump up or decrease those levels. So that's an overview of all of the section in curves and you can turn these all on and off to see what you've done. And I'd recommend doing this as you go through your color correction process because you can really start to see a big difference between your original footage and the graded version. There you go, I think that's finished. And just look at how good that looks. And that's just using this curved section. And then from here, you can go into your basic corrections or even add a LUT if you'd like to adjust it more to your liking. There we go, so I hope that video has helped and I hope it's helped you understand the curve section a little bit more because it can look a little complicated. I remember the first time I opened up the curve section and you know, there's not really any explanation of what things do. So, uh, you know, you play around with it, have a little experiment, but these tips that we've just gone over should really help you get the best out of your video footage. If you've got any questions or comments, please do leave them below because I promise we do get back to every single one and make sure to click up here to see the rest of our Premiere Pro tutorials. And I'll see you in the next video.